This is physics 12. This is number uh, 21 on page 438. And <clears throat> this question is asking for the electric field at the corner of a square. So let's pick this corner here and it's due to these three charges. And these three charges, so this is a square here, right? And these three charges are, let's call them uh, Q1, Q2, and Q3. So uh, Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to uh, Q3. So all the Q's are equal, and they're equal to 250 times 10 to the power of negative 7 coulombs. And so what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the uh, electric field at this location here. So in order to do this, obviously, we're going to have to add them up. So we'll say, you know, uh, let's say this is point P, so we'll say, the electric field at point P is equal to the electric field uh, at point P due to uh, Q1, or actually, I, I think perhaps I will fix that. So we'll say that's a 1 plus the electric field at point P due to charge 2 plus the electric field at point P due to charge number 3. So we have to add these guys up vectorially. And th it's actually not that bad because there's a lot of symmetry we can take advantage of. So due to charge 1, uh, this is going to be E1 uh, or EP at 1. This is going to be E at P due to charge 3. And then there is another one here which is exactly along the diagonal. And that one's going to be the smallest one. Uh, but what you need to understand, though, is that really we don't have to deal with angles in this situation. Why not? Because this is a, a square, right? And it's symmetric. Each side of the square uh, has a length of, I think it was uh, 50 centimeters. So we'll just say it's... Uh, 0.5 meters, right? 0.5 meters, 0.5 meters, 0.5 meters. So let's let's just think about you know e th e3 and e1. They're going to be equal because the distances are equal and the charges are equal. So e at P due to 1 is equal to, in magnitude at least, right, is equal to the magnitude at E uh, due to th point 0.3. Now, everything is on P. So in fact, you know, I I'm just going to get rid of the P notation because there is no other point other than point. So I'll just say the e electric field is equal to E due to 1 at E due to 2 and e due to 3. That'll, that'll make it a little cleaner to understand, right? So 1, 2, 3. So I can just say e1 is equal to the magnitude of e3. Uh, obviously, right, because e is equal to kq over r squared, and the r's are, as I said, the r's are the same and the q's are the same. So we're going to get the same value. Now what is this value? Well, it's 9 times 10 to the power of 9 times a Q of, that's given, 250 10 to the negative 7 coulombs divided by R squared, which is 0.5 squared. Now, when we do that, uh, we're going to get a, uh, a number, which is uh, 9 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per coulomb. So there you go. So now we know what E1 and E3 is, except that we'd like to figure out what the combined value is. So in order to do that, we'll say, OK, here is E3 and here is E1. 
because obviously three, this guy, is going to be pushing this guy, because they're all, by the way, all these are positive, right? They're all positive. So the electric field here is due to a positive test charge, so it's, this guy's going to be, Q3 is pushing, Q1 is pushing, and so therefore, here is E1 and here is E3. Now, because they're equal, then we know that the resultant goes like this. However, if you think about a triangle, now th forget physics for a minute and just think about math, right? If a triangle has equal legs, so let's give it one and one, then what is the hypotenuse going to be? Well, that's one squared plus one squared. Take the square root. So that's the square root of two. So this is like a math a really nice triangle to remember in terms of math, right? Because whenever you have equal sided uh, legs, then the hypotenuse is root two times the size of times the size of the leg. That means this guy is root two times, and remember this was one of them, so it's times nine to the power of five. That means that's going to equal um, 1.72 times 10 to the power of uh, 6. OK? So now we know what E1 and E3 is equal to. And by the way, we do know the angle as well. It's 45. Now going back to this one, Q2, this one's actually going to be along the diagonal, which also, by the way, happens to be along that same direction which is 45. So in fact, all of these, well, not all of them, Q2, the force or the electric field, sorry, due to Q2 is in the same direction as the vector sum of Q1 and Q3, right? So here, this one's the sum of 1 and 3. Well, Q2 acts in the exact same direction. So all we got to do figure out now is what is E2? Well, that's KQ all over R squared, but the R is different now, right? So the R, in this case, obviously, this is the same, right? And the charge is the same. But the, now what's the distance? Well, we can actually use this same trick to figure out the distance because now it's a it's a square, right? And we just want to know this diagonal distance. Well, this is 0.5, and this is 0.5. So what's this? Easy. It's just root 2 times 0.5. Now, you can, you can figure this out, too. I mean, I, we can work it out, right? Because it's 0.5 squared plus 0.5 squared. Uh, take the square root, OK? Well, that's the square root of uh, 2 times 0.5 squared, and that's going to end up being root 2 times 0 0.5. So it's right. Okay, So it's the same concept. So now we'll just go root 2 all over 0 0.5. And, um, but we have to, but obviously, OK, so that's the distance, right? But we have to square it, though, still. So when we square it and we work it out, obviously this is the root two squares is going to be a two, and um, so when we work it out, we get uh, 4.5 times 10 to the power of five newtons per coulomb. Now, notice this guy is smaller, right, uh, than this guy, OK? So essentially, we know that this now is, this was E1 plus E3 here, OK? Now we just have to add E2 to it. And the nice thing is, is that they're all exactly in the same direction. So essentially, now we just go E1 plus E3 plus E2. These two guys were 1.72, 10 to the power of 6. 
and this guy is 4.5, 10 to the power of 5. And we end up with, oops, OK, I messed up. This is wrong. Uh, and this is wrong. That's the final answer. So this was e1 plus e2. And that was equal to 1.27. Seven, 3 times 10 to the power of 6. So essentially now, right? Because essentially this was, this was um, uh, e1. And then e1 plus e3 is root 2 times that. And root 2 times that will give us this. So that was equal to e1 plus e3. And then we have to add e2, which is this guy. So this was 1 plus 3 was 1.273, 10 to the power of 6, plus 4.5 times 10 to the power of 5, which is e2, right? And that's going to give us 1.72 times 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb. And the direction for that, you could say at 45 degrees uh, like that. What? I messed, no, what's that? I, not 45C, just 45 degrees. And the units are newtons per coulomb. OK, so that's the final answer. And we took advantage of symmetry a lot in this question. OK? And that's question 21.